Caustics. 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 It's not as cost effective as you think. There's not enough removal and acid rain and global devastation due to climate change. Caustics. Caustics. We're gonna heal our broken planet. Heal our broken planet. Sleep out style! I said sleep, chick a sleep! I said sleep, chick a sleep! I said cheek, sleep, 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 sleep. sleep, sleep. 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 chick a sleep! I said sleep, chick a sleep! I said sleep on the common for clean energy, chick a sleep! I said sleep on the common for clean energy, chick a sleep! Uh huh! Uh huh! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This is going pretty good! This is going pretty good! Fossil fields have got to go! Set three, five, go! Fossil fields have got to go! Silver warming's got to go! House to tell our leaders what we want them to do. This cause does not end on Tuesday when we meet with the governor and ask him to repower Massachusetts with 100% clean electricity in 10 years. And this cause does not end when right after that meeting we set up some tents right outside the state house and gave him a 48 hour deadline to let us know if he's going to introduce our bill or not. And this cause does not end on Thursday when regardless of this deadline we start moving forward with the House of Representatives. Representative Will Brownsberger has agreed to introduce our bill into the state legislature the governor does not. This cause does not end next Sunday when we return to this exact same spot. And this cause does not end the following Sunday and the Sunday after that when we come back here to demand a just and stable future for all of us. This carbon-free camp here tonight is the beacon on Beacon Hill. You guys are the shining light. So I'm here on behalf of the Green Rainbow Party to give you our strong endorsement for the leadership campaign and our strong support for 100% clean renewable electricity in 10 years. Yeah. This movement is growing because of your inspiration, your vision, and your hard work. And we need to walk the walk in every aspect of our life and get endorsements from every organization that we're a part of for the leadership campaign. Yeah. And uh, Unitarian Universalist Massachusetts Action Network is very honored to have endorsed this campaign and join with you tonight to sleep out on the common. Every religious tradition forbids theft. And th global warming is theft from future generations and from the most vulnerable populations in the world today. Every religious tradition counsels us to temper our craving for material things, for sensation. And global warming is the consequence of our addiction to material things. Every religious tradition calls us to care for creation. And yet we defile it and are in danger of destroying it. That's why I'm here and that's why more and more religious people are understanding that we must take action, that we need to take our prayer out of the sanctuary and into the streets with you all. Glaciers melting, oceans warming, revival. Cities flooding, insects swarming, revival. We took the earth and its sweet wonder, paved it over, plowed it under, sold it short and still we hunger, revival. Step it up. Step it up, we can slow down, now take my hand and don't let go. Gotta make it to the higher ground now, three, five, oh. for the last eight years, part of a group called Religious Witness for the Earth, 
which is an interfaith activist network of folks dedicated to protecting God's creation. When it comes to building a climate movement, we need everybody's help. As they say on boats in a troubled sea, it's all hands on deck. When it comes to building a climate movement, we've got a secret resource. You know, we and I have access to a power that is endless and completely renewable. And that is the power of love, of divine love. And you know that every mainstream religion understands that God entrusted the earth to human care. I invite you to sign the Interfaith Call for 350, uh, which is on the website. And I want to announce tonight that Religious Witness for the Earth is standing with you. And I have with me in this piece of paper our endorsement of the leadership campaign. I think I'm like you. I refuse to believe that human beings will simply cool our heels and resign ourselves to living in a world of violent weather as we placidly bid our glaciers and coral reefs and alpine forests goodbye. This is the moral challenge of our generation, and it is a privilege to share in this great work with you. I think that it needs to be said that I want to bring up that it is no mistake that the logo on our t-shirts, the beautiful red t-shirts we've been wearing, is the Minuteman. Okay? All right? Woo! And I'm going to talk, I want to talk a little bit about why that is and express to you the intensity and the excitement about the shoes that we have to fill in this state because they're huge. Okay, first of all, I don't know how many of you knew this, but Minutemen, on average, were below the age of 30. And maybe we're not fighting for the same cause that they were 200 years ago, but I think that we can agree that the fight that we are fighting today together is just as patriotic and has the love and excitement and appreciation of our great nation in mind. I grew up in Lexington, and I spent my summers when I was in high school giving tours on the battle green in Lexington. I had a tricorn hat, and I would go out and tell the story over and over and over again of the Minutemen in Lexington and the beginning, not only of the American Revolution, really of the first revolution against empire, uh, 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 a process that lasted a couple of hundred years as we slowly dismantled colonialism around the world and replaced it with democracy. Um, a great story and amazing people who came before us. Massachusetts was the cradle of all kinds of interesting thinking and interesting action. Uh, this may be a little bit of an uneasy night tonight um, because all these tents are pitched on a hill um, and, <laughs> and it's going to be a little hard to fall asleep. And maybe a little hard because we're not completely maybe supposed to be here all night, but that's all right. Our survival depends on getting to 350. We're not going to go to Copenhagen or any place else and sign a suicide pact. We demand that the world give us a survival pact. And we're going to need everybody to step up more as time goes on. Uh, I was saying earlier today that I think we're probably going to have to keep raising the stakes in the years ahead. It doesn't look like our politicians are going to solve this problem for us. It looks like we may have to solve this problem for them. And that's where I'm going to end. I was telling people earlier today, showing them a picture that arrived three or four hours ago now from Bangladesh. The students today, the picture they sent was of a 350 foot long letter that they're sending to President Obama with thousands of signatures. Every student at their university and every professor and every administrator saying, we need your help to get to 350. And they do need his help and they do need our help. It is our responsibility because we are at the center of this political problem. We're the country still that's providing the biggest obstacle toward real change. So rocky the road. So rocky the road. So dangerous the journey. So dangerous the journey. But we got to right. But we got to right. Ain't you got to right to the tree of life? Ain't you got to right? Ain't you got to
right? Ain't you got a right? Ain't you got a right? Ain't you got a right? To the tree of life. We come to the book and we are singing, singing for our love. We are just in love. Singing for us.